Hi guys, I just got back from the first day of Spiel Expo in Oslo. That is the gaming expo for Norway. And I went there specifically because I knew EA were going to be there and they were going to be taking a demo of Dragon Age Inquisition and I was hoping to get a little more play and I did and I thought I would share my impressions, my opinions with you guys. Okay, so unfortunately, when I get there, I realize that they, they've they brought the Xbox version. That's what they're showing off. They've got several um, stations set up with Xbox versions of it. They don't have a PC version. So I decide, you know what? I'm going to soldier on. I am going to try and play this on the Xbox. And I did, and it wasn't, it wasn't quite as painful as you might have imagined. I managed to get the hang of the controller. It certainly was not uh, me at my best, not by a long shot, but I, I did a reasonable job and got quite a bit further. So I got to experience the game further. And in fact, they actually start the game pretty much where I left off uh, the last time. They, they don't want to show the prologue, so they're starting right after that. So I, I got to see the entire starting area, and I spent several hours exploring and uh, got, a, got a pretty good look at the game, a pretty good feel. Although, I have to tell you, they blocked off a lot of aspects of the game. A lot, they, they, you pretty much restricted to one area. Uh, they blocked off the journal. You couldn't sort of go through your quests um, and change things like that. You couldn't change settings. It was pretty much you go, you pick up the controller, you play a pre-made character. You had a choice between a mage or a warrior, um, you, a Kunari mage or a human warrior with a two-handed sword. And that was it. You, you chose one of those. You started from the start of the start area and off you go. So you're not really going to pick up much of the story doing that. So the people who were playing there probably, well, I mean, I played the prologue, so I actually kind of knew what was going on, which gave me a big advantage. Um, but it let you feel the interface. It let you explore how the game played. So how did it play? Well, first of all, the game still looked great. I mean, it's an Xbox, not as good as PC. The textures weren't as good. It just it just didn't look as good. But the world, because I was spending more time exploring the world, the world looks great. Um, it's it's quite big. The, the starting area alone, which is supposed to be a small area, was big. Uh, I was exploring it for hours, didn't find the limits of it, got lost several times, fell off a few mountains and died, that type of thing. It might not be as big as it felt because there's a lot of windy passages and I kept getting lost and of course I'm not very good with the controller, but it was easily big enough to to sort of, uh, you know, cater for your wanderlust as you wander around exploring things just in this one area. Um, it's got a very open feel. You're not forced along one path and you go from one place to the next. You can literally roam around the entire area. And there are tons of quests you can pick up. Loads of little side quests. You can agree to help people out. They will, they will talk to you as you run past and you can sort of elect to ignore them or talk to them. Tell them you'll help them and get their son so that he can make a potion to cure his mother and all that sort of... The usual fare in an RPG. You can pick up the quest. It's really open world. Uh, there is a, a sort of fast travel system, but it, what it, you do is you travel around and you find places on the map marked with tents, and you can set them up as camps, and you can fast travel to any camps you visited previously. But if you if you haven't explored an area, you can't fast travel to it. So you, you there is some limited amount of fast travel. I'm not totally sure whether I would use it. Probably not. You know me. I do like um, the, the, the exploration. Uh, now, your exploration will get uh, interrupted constantly because there is a big battle going on between two warring factions who also happen to dislike you. So it's pretty much a three-way brawl, and you can actually ignore quite a few of them. If they're fighting each other, you can sometimes just skip past them, but very often you're going to get dragged into a fight and have to do some... Uh, put the smack down. You really are. You're going to have to slap a few heads around 
and dominate the area. And in fact, I get the feeling, even though I couldn't check my journal and look at what I was supposed to be doing, I get the feeling that's kind of what I was supposed to do. I go around, I help refugees, I claim spots. You can claim areas and landmarks. You can put a big flag up and say, this belongs to the Inquisition. Um, and uh, sort of, you know, that area is now yours. Uh, now, that idea is something that is pretty new to me, and I'm not totally sure how I feel about it yet. The idea of, uh, in an RPG, sort of wandering around areas and claiming the area to build up your power base. It, it almost felt a little like a first-person RTS game, or, uh, you know, a strategy game, where I was staking land. But I, I'm not totally sure whether or not that actually has any effect on the game, or whether it was just to fulfill a quest. I had a quest to to claim 17 landmarks, so perhaps it was just a quest that gets me experience, but perhaps not. Perhaps I actually, when I gain that territory, I actually get some benefit. Who knows? I will have to play the game a lot further to figure out that. Um, in my travels, I discovered a number of things, including locked doors. I found my first locked door. And one of the cool things is I walked up to it with my warrior because I decided to play a warrior this time and tried to open the door and I heard a voice at the back saying, I can help you with that. And it was my dwarven thief uh, character. Um, he He's the one that has to do the, the lock picking. So I had to switch characters to him and have him go forward and pick the lock. And I kind of liked that. I liked the fact that it didn't just automatically open just because I had him in the, the, the party. I had to tell him to do it. And the way it did it was this cheeky little voice sort of saying, oh, I've got it, let me in, and off he goes. So I quite liked that. And something similar happened later on when I was activating a light source. I was about to enter a dungeony type area, and there was this light source, and you have to power it up. But it's a magical light source, and of course you need to be a mage. And my mage at the side of the back volunteering, oh, I think you'll need me for that, and off he goes and grabs the light source. Now, I'm not sure if he could actually pass that light source to one of his colleagues. I didn't actually try, I never thought of that. Uh, but I had to then control him, because he was the only person who had a light source, and he would wander into the dungeon and light any sconces we found. And I needed to do it that way, because it was dark. None of this casual game, oh, we're going to make it look a bit dimmer and make it all a bit bluer, but you can still see perfectly. No, 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 no. It was bloody dark. The deeper I got, the darker it got until it was absolutely pitch black. No light. I'm deep underground. No light. It was awesome. Um, I love it when games do that. I had to have a light source. And I'm wondering if there is a light spell or if there is a um, night vision type ability, because if there is, it's going to be invaluable. And I, and I quite like that. So all in all, I really did enjoy myself, but there were a few niggly little things, little things that kind of kept um, irritating me a little bit. Um, the first one was I found it very hard to use the tactical camera with the controller. That may be because I'm a total console, um, you know, newbie. But I just, I found it a lot harder to use tactical uh, mode without a mouse. And so I spent most of the time in over the shoulder camera shots. And honestly, I'm not as keen for combat with that type of camera. And there's a couple of reasons for it. Firstly, I do think on the harder difficulties, tactical camera is going to be the way to go. It gives you a better overview. You keep a lot more control of all of the party. Um, and of course, you know, I mean, I was playing normal again, and it started to get tough. As a, The further I went, the tougher it got. Now, again, I was using a controller, so it was bound to be a little tougher for me than it should be. But... It was, I, I sort of played very much for myself. My three party members did their own thing. And I have to say, did it better than I did. Again, probably because of the controller. They got on with their job and did what they needed to do. But in a few of the tougher fights, I really sort of thought to myself, you know what, I'd like to take control and put my archer there and my healer there and, and my tank here and so on. And you can't do that in, well, I say you can't do that in over the shoulder mode. That might be wrong. There was a command wheel, but I didn't quite get the hang of it. 
again, I think the command wheel telling you, you, you your, your guys where to go, that's going to be something for over the shoulder. Um, and I'm not totally sure how I feel about it. So I, I'm, I'm generally not a lover of over the shoulder games, to be honest, um, especially when you've got party members. So, I mean, it works okay in The Witcher, but in, in most games, I'm not a lover of it. Now, Mass Effect did something similar, but I actually think they, they handled the command system very, very well. You, you really only needed one button to tell all you guys to attack your target, one button to tell you guys to fall back, and two other buttons to tell you each one of your guys where to go. And because you could hotkey their abilities... You could actually use their key abilities without having to go into a menu. You could do it all very, very easily and very, very fluidly. I get the feeling it's not as easy in Dragon Age Inquisition. because You do get this command wheel, but I don't know how much control you have over their spells and special abilities. So if you really want to specify particular spells or particular abilities, you're going to have to switch characters. And, and, and I found that a little clunky when I compared it to the tactical view with the pause time. Probably people who use controllers will try the tactical uh, view and disagree with me and say, no, it's fine, I'm used to the controller, I tried tactical mode and it was dead easy. So it could just be me. So be warned, again, I'm, I'm certainly not the person to listen to with respect to how it plays on the Xbox. Uh, for me, when I go to PC, I'm probably going to spend most of my time in the tactical camera. One other thing that sort of um, well, annoyed me, but I would like not to have seen, was object highlighting. So I, I, I would walk into a room or I would... I fell off a cliff at one point and found a chest. But most of the reason I found it wasn't that I actually saw it, but it, it briefly highlighted... It briefly highlighted as a clickable object. Now, that happens in a lot of games, and, and I, it took me a while to figure out why I didn't like it so much in Dragon Age Inquisition, and it's because I'm playing in over the shoulder. I feel like it's a first-person game. Um, when I play in the tactical mode, having highlightable objects would feel okay, because whenever I play games that are third-person, as in isometric camera type thing, from above, Having highlighted objects is how you do everything, because everything's kind of small and difficult to see. But when you're in over-the-shoulder mode or third, first person, I generally am... Maybe, maybe I don't mind it so much, it depends how it's done, but I felt it was a little abrupt. It was a little in-your-face. And you guys know I'm, I'm a big lover of subtle user interface. So that, that kind of poked at me a little bit. And the last thing that... I think I would say was a negative at the moment was the combat for the warrior. And, and that's a bit weird. And, and it took me a while to, to figure out what it was I didn't like about that as well. In fact, I didn't figure it out until I, I was on the train home, just thinking about it. And I think the combat with swords is, at least the two-handed weapons anyway, is a little over the top. Um, and I don't mean the abilities. I mean, I... They'd set up a build, and obviously they'd set up an interesting build, one that had a variety of abilities, and I had the ability to roll quickly out of the way, I had the ability to stun people um, with an attack, I had the ability to do a sort of sweeping attack with my two-handed weapon and hit everything around me, and I also had this very cool ability where I could throw a kind of grapple at people, grab them and pull them to me, and then hit them. It was very, very cool, it was a lot of fun to use, but something about it felt off, and it is because it's a little over the top. The visuals are a little too much. The stun attack, for example, I, I would turn around and stun them, but all these rocks would come out of the ground, massive rubble pile, almost as if I'd sort of ruptured the earth with this attack. And then a few seconds later, they would disappear. And then when I did the spinning attack with the double-handed sword to, tr to kill people around me, it, it kind of left a blurred effect, similar to The Witcher, but somehow more in your face, a little too stylized. And, and that, that's what got me about it, was it made it feel a little too much like an action game and not quite enough like an RPG. And that is in complete contrast to the magic attacks because of course I played a mage last time and had no such feeling. 
And the mage attacks are great. But then they've got special effects, but they're magic and it feels right. When when you cast the area of effect spells, you see this great big ring area with the sparkling effects. And when you fire it, the, the magic opens up and you get this great effect. And that's great. But I didn't quite like it on, on the attacks. There's something about it made it feel less real, uh, less immersive. Um, so... The other thing is I may be noticing it more this time because I spent more time in over the shoulder. So you're very, very close to the characters. Whereas if you're in the tactical mode, um, you're, you're far above them. Maybe the visuals are less distracting. So there could be that. Now, it could just be the abilities that they chose. They may have actually chose the most visually spectacular um, uh, moves just to get people excited and interested, um, but it, it had the opposite effect on me. It just it, there was something about it kind of annoyed me, and and in the end, I figured out it was it just it really did go a little over the top for my liking. Now I don't know if you can turn it off. I couldn't go into the options and change it. I don't know if you can switch it off, and and I sort of hope you can, or at least tone it down somewhat. Probably when I play the game, I'm going to play a warrior type, but I might avoid the two-handed weapon uh, then because um, I didn't notice it as much on the character with a sword and shield either. Maybe, maybe their abilities weren't quite as spectacular. Now, this is a style issue rather than a substance issue. I mean, the, the gameplay itself was fine. The combat itself was fun. Um, so if, if they remove the visuals, or if I can get past the visuals, it won't affect my enjoyment of the game. But I don't remember the game being that in your face, at least uh, the, um, the Dragon Age Origins game. I don't remember that game being quite as in your face. And I'm hoping that on the PC version, when I play the PC version, I will be playing it in the tactical cam and perhaps you can turn some of the effects off, who knows, or just avoid some of the more spectacular abilities and it will feel more like the Origins combat. But of course, that's that's probably not going to be... It's probably not going to be exactly the same, but I'm hoping it's, it has more of that feel. This is not something that's going to ruin the game for me. It is something I'll probably forget pretty quickly if the game delivers the story and the atmosphere. And it definitely seemed to be heading that way from what I saw last time. Um, if it, you know, really makes you feel for the characters. And, oh, and I can tell you now, I enjoyed the characters' banter. The characters talk to each other in the background, um, and they have very interesting conversations, and you do get a feel for them and their relationship with each other, which is very, very cool. If they continue to do that, if the game develops and I have that kind of epic quest feeling, and I get that, the sort of feeling I had for some of the characters in uh, Origins, where I really did like them, I'm I'm going to get past some of the visual effects. I'm going to get past some of the stylized uh, uh, combat moves and probably still enjoy it just as much as I thought I was going to. Uh, but this is one of those things where I can't help but think, I wish this game was more moddable. Because I can tell you, I did ask um, whether the game was moddable, and I was told that it's probably difficult, uh, more difficult than, say, Origins, because of the engine. Um, their, their official stance is they do not support modding, but they are not against it. However, they do feel it's got, it will be a bit more difficult. But this is one of those things where I think to myself, if we could just mod the game and maybe remove some of those effects here, maybe change the user interface, maybe remove the glow on objects, these little things that we can tweak, um, it will make the, the game so much better for, for people like me. And I haven't given up. I mean, they said it was more difficult to mod. But, you know, the modding community, they're pretty good at this sort of thing. So who knows? And I tell you what, this is one of those things where if the modding community can sort of tweak things like that, it will actually make the game better for me than if it had come with that. Because, of course, I absolutely love taking good games and watching mod makers make them great games. Um, and this game to me, this game to me still looks like it's going to be a great game. Uh, but there are, there are a few things I think are going to be on my wish list of things I wish I could mod. 
Anyway, guys, uh, I have rambled long enough. I was not intending to ramble for this amount of time. Um, let me know what you think. I am curious as to how many of you are looking forward to this game, what you're looking forward uh, f to in the game, and whether or not some of the things that bothered me might bother you, or whether you think that you'll just you'll get past those straight away, or, or are you going to do something like, well, fine, I'm going to play a mage then, and I won't care about the uh, those special moves, because I won't be taking them. So, tell me what you think down below. I am curious. I've given you my opinion based upon um, a brief look at the game in London, and a look at the demo today on the Xbox. Uh, and it was two very different things. One, one really, I got a taste for the story and the atmosphere of the game. And on the other session, I got a feel for the mechanics. So, um, what I've got to do now is get the PC version of the game, sit at home with a nice set of refreshments, and see how the two work together, I guess. But of course, that is going to be a few weeks away, so we will just have to see.